August the 4th, 2023. Guys, it is hot outside right now here in central Mississippi. At 2.50 p.m. Central Time, our temperature has dropped from as far as the heat index from 124 to 121. The temperature act is 102 and our humidity is at 48 percent now i remember a day this is the second highest reading of the summer but one day in during last month's heat wave guys uh we had 99 percent humidity and the heat indice here was at 132 but uh, i took images of this in in a video later this afternoon or tonight i will put up some of the pictures now if you get some puppies yipping in the back uh, I've got all five of the puppies now that they're getting it right at five months old and weighing the boys are weighing 45 pounds and the girls are probably about 38 pounds or something. The two girls that we kept, we kept five of the pups and uh, the ones you saw in the last video, I think. But Guys, we will, uh, I will get more information on that. But anyway, they're in here because they have a a room that you saw in the video when they were very young we were sitting out there and they were playing around playing with rocket if you remember that video but uh the they have a window unit there and it's just not keeping up with the temperature so they're in my office so if you hear some barking or chewing on some toys or whatever thing you can imagine five month old puppies do you then i have no choice i'm not going to let them get overheated out there and it's nice and cool inside but this is why i'm here this is an article that's on accuweather you can check it out it's on in the articles that they list on the right you can just go to accuweather.com and it will have different top stories and this is one of them and i think it's important to talk about now of course any mainstream media outlet they're going to throw in man-made climate change regardless if it's too cold or too hot or whatever it is and then, but at least here they are adding in that it is a record El Nino in the Pacific Ocean. It's extremely warm. Now, we do have what's called man-made heated islands. And you think about a city like New York or Phoenix, Arizona. It's huge. And it's almost a concrete ju uh, jungle in itself. And that when you have uh, the lows in Phoenix, some were, I think, were 97 during the nights then the concrete and things like that never have a chance to cool off you reach 120 the next day 115 and it just multiplies and you do have these heat islands and if you're in an area with heavy uh, heavy industrial pollution like oil refineries you guys in louisiana know what i'm talking about in texas oklahoma you know what that could add up i don't know if it would be a degree or whatever and it's going to be hotter in these heat islands but they're, they're pushing a carbon credit agenda. So it, just about any mainstream article, they've got to put in man-made climate change. But what this article is talking about is South America is not having a winner. Now, I remember in a video I did several years ago, and you guys have, talked, uh, have seen it, and we talked about it, and you've read about it. But it was called The Year Without a Summer. And that was here in the U.S. after what they pro they projected was uh, volcanic activity heavy around the planet. And up in New York and some of those states in the Northeast, it never heated up. Plants failed. People were starving. And that actually was the greatest California, and not a gold rush, but a survival rush to get out of this mini ice age that they were having, it, it, we were having here in the uh, U.S., but again, they, uh, it wasn't the California gold rush. It was the year without a summer. Possibly uh, South America is looking at a, a year without a winter because this would be February in South America and uh, the, because they went the tilt of the earth. And there go the puppies. They're cutting up back here, playing with each other and barking. <laughs> They're arguing over what toy each one of them is going to get. And like I said, you, the boys are 45 pounds, and they are, it's unbelievable. You won't believe it's the same dogs when we put a video up on that. But that's the noise in the background I warned you earlier. But let's look at more on this article. Now, 
in the article, there's a picture that's taken a couple of days ago on August 2nd of Santiago. And it's small caused by higher temperatures in the city. And again, they're not having a winter. We're looking over 100 degrees like we're doing here. I don't know what the heat index, uh, heat index real feel like that, but they're talking about just the temperatures and uh, both Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. But it says parts of South America are sweltering under abnormally hot temperatures despite being in the depths of winter. It says as a combination of human caused climate change, which we just talked about, and the arrival of El Nino feed into extreme winter heat. And guys, the timing of this is kind of matching everything. We're seeing World War III about to open and Africa is going to be right in the middle of it. But there's three articles now on WarNews247.gr that you can go and look at. Find all three with the beginning of the coup in Africa, throwing off the yokes of uh, colonization from the U.K., the U.S., and France. And the U.S. has an air base there. We don't know how that will work out. But what happened when that occurred about a week ago when it started, the uh, what they're calling a coup, the made the U.S. and France and U.K. furious. The New World Order was very mad because they were trying to control the rare minerals that are there. They can make steel. You've got diamonds, gold, oil, a lot of different things. And so that's how colonization works. Well, um, the president of Russia forgave billions and billions worth of dollars of debt that Africa owed. And he's shipping them ton i think 50,000 or 60,000 tons of grain free because africa was not getting what they were supposed to during the uh zelensky trade deal with the grain it was going to europe instead of to the poor countries justice is being served but um check that out on again wardnews247.gr and look at what's happening normally because of the power of the U.S. military and France and the U.K., the all three of those gave uh, one week to the rebel leaders, are calling them, of the coup. It's actually military people, it looks like to me, just, and they say they're tired of it. They keep the president out. He may be locked up. I'm not sure. This is in Niger, but it's this is about the fourth or fifth country to go that way. And some of the larger countries are saying they're, if they're attacked, which what is the three folks I'm talking about, the colonizers, if they're attacked by them, which is, that's what they're saying, then the, these other countries are going to come to the aid, more than likely Iran will and Russia. So this is brewing very, very big right now. It's going to, it's actually becoming as big as the situation in Ukraine. So again, check out the articles. But what will happen, what's been happening is with the power of these three nations, they could come in and threaten the people of Africa and not let them do this. They were propping up the governments that they wanted, the leaders they wanted that would let them swindle and lie and cheat and steal. Now, it's to me, it's something that should have been done a long time ago. Take the yokes off of every nation, including us, and our high tax burdens. It's the same thing, just a different different way they do it anyway check that out it's very important it's going to wind up a major area in the upcoming war going back to that again this time the earth will not be flooded we will have high heat is that where we're going now when you start to see this type of information coming out of what should be february in the southern hemisphere Southern cone countries, including Chile and Argentina, have experienced summer-like conditions as a heat wave beginning in July pushed temperatures higher than 38 degrees Celsius. That's 100 degrees Fahrenheit in some places, dramatically above average for this time of the year. A climatologist who tracks extreme temperature across the globe said that this is, they're experiencing South America a fierce winter heat wave. While such heat waves are not unheard of for the continent, this one has exceptional characteristics for its area, duration, intensity, and being in early August. Again, should be the February weather there. He continues adding dozens of stations are recording their highest ever temps in the first half of August. 
August in the Southern Hemisphere is equivalent to February in the Northern Hemisphere. Chile's environmental minister said that the world has been experiencing extreme events for weeks. Yesterday, it was the turn of South America and Chile. In the mountains, uh, Chilean Andes region, temperatures climbed to 38.9 degrees Celsius, which is 102 degrees Fahrenheit, on Tuesday. This was according to her, who described the event as unbelievable for midwinter and rewriting all climate books. In the Conquimbo region in northern Chile, temperatures average around 22 degrees or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's at the height of its summer. But this year, in midwinter, they have soared far higher, again, averaging 72. And we'll read down below that. It says the city of Vacuna reached 37.1 degrees Celsius or 98.8 degrees Fahrenheit on August the 2nd. This temperature is the highest recorded in this period in all of Chile. It also marks the second highest temperature on record for the country's winter, which runs from June until August. Only in August 1951, there was a higher temperature of 37.3 degrees Celsius or 99.1 degrees Fahrenheit recorded in Copiapo. Now, it would be interesting if one of you guys wanted to look up that year as far as weather history in that area and see what it was leading up to the like month before, month after, or was it just a, set, a temporary spike? That would be uh, something that would be... Uh, you would want that in your research. It says, Tuesday was like the warmest winter day in northern Chile in 72 years, the climatologist of the university uh, in the Netherlands said. In Argentina, some places reached highs of 38 degrees or 100.4 Fahrenheit, according to the country's meteorological service. The capital of Buenos Aires, where August temperatures usually average 18 degrees or 64 Fahrenheit, experienced its hottest to start August in 117 years of data. That's as far as the information goes back. With temperatures of just above 30 degrees or 86 degrees Fahrenheit on August the 1st, this smashed the previous record for that day of 73 Fahrenheit or 24.6 Celsius said in 1942. The high temps are expected to continue for the next five to six days. Concentrated in northern Argentina, Paraguay, Bolivia, and southwest Brazil. They could reach up to 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit. Now, they'll talk about El Nino here, which is the major cause of how do the oceans heat up. It's when we're having increased solar activity and we're climbing into the higher regions of solar cycle 25. We're not at the peak yet, but, but we've already reached peaks of this solar cycle that are higher than the highest points of the last solar cycle and they're 11.8 years long so we're having that we're having more radiation pouring in and it's heating up the oceans it says el nino a natural climate pattern that originates in the tropical pacific brings warmer than average sea surface temps and has a major influence on weather across the globe that's why we're seeing these record-breaking high systems parking over us here in the u.s it says uh of course layer on top of global warming caused by humans burning plant warming fossil fuels and canada burning most of the largest forests in the planet and many other nations temperatures can reach record-breaking levels but guys again i talked about the man-made heat islands and thing pollution things like that they do contribute but what we're dealing with right now is the sun heating up this planet this extreme, the extreme heats in parts of South Africa fits into a broader global pattern. July was the planet's hottest month on record, they're saying, by a significant margin. I believe it here. I don't know about the rest of the planet. I'd like to hear your comments, regardless of where you're from. And scientists found the heat waves that seared part of the U.S., Southern Europe, and China in the Northern Hemisphere summer were made significantly more likely, likely by the human-caused climate change. They should just say, we need your carbon tax credits and we need to li limit how much carbon you can produce in your footprint and put it on your new upcoming CDC card that will be, will be your money. That's what they should say. They, they just keep rolling this over. And it, it really is gets to ad nauseum. And I think one of the best things about the Internet are the comments because 
regardless of what people say that we get in mainstream media, folks that are in South America and other parts of the globe come into our comments and uh, let us know what the, what it is there. It does help to have a weather gauge that had it's switchable. And guys, we just hit the high today at 125 heat index. It's 104 outside here in central Mississippi. 125 heat index, and the humidity is only 46 percent. I can't. I, it would be unbearable with higher humidity. And it's. I'm hoping and praying, with all, especially because of my pets. If it's just a couple people, you could bug out and get a cheap motel room or something but with with it, all of our pups we can't do that so just pray that uh, us and anybody else in this heat wave can keep their power on and stay cool but guys we're watching this i think it's important check out the uh things happening over in africa and because right now uh europe is turning away from Zelensky, so is the u.s as a matter of fact Biden just took money that was gonna go to Zelensky and send it to Taiwan to supposedly protect, help protect them from China's aggression, basically to pre protect the chip manufacturers. So th there's a, wars and rumors of wars everywhere, but uh, they are turning. They're saying Zelensky, you've pretty much used us up on what we can help you with. Z-Man saying they're out of bullets. And uh, they have their military is uh, being shredded, and their morale is very low. So we don't know how that's going to work out all together. Russia is moving miles and miles per day. One of their ships got hit today by one of the drones in the Black Sea, one of their warships. It was a troop carrier and a cargo carrier type vessel, but it was part of the uh, Black Sea Naval Fleet. And it's being, it was being towed in earlier because it was lisping to the left side. But uh, you know that's going to aggravate things even more. And it was very close to a port uh, or, or in the port area of one of the Russian uh, sections there where they export grain. So you saw that going back and forth. But again, we're watching it, guys. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.